In this video we're going to address um, the issue of Arianism and just to give you a brief definition of what Arianism is um, it's an, it was an influential uh, heresy denying the divinity of Christ originating with the Alexandrian priest Arius. Uh, Arianism uh, maintained that the Son of God was created by the Father and was therefore neither co-eternal with the Father nor co-substantial with Him. Um, now there are two groups that are uh, uh, none of the um, heresies of the um, of the history of the church have gone completely away, and Arianism still remains today in two popular forms or two um, common forms, which uh, are the the Church of the Lat Latter Day Saints, or more commonly known as the Mormons and uh, the uh, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, or more commonly known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, so what we're going to do is look at how to refute Arianism. Um, and first we're going to go to um, some verses that might be more commonly used, but would be a mistake to use uh, when dealing with uh, followers of Arianism. So we'll go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was uh, with God, and the Word was God. So in John 1, 1, we find a mystery there. We find God and the Word, and both of them being uh, divine, being God. Um, so we see two persons here, plurality and the nature of God. And then if we go to um, John 1, 14, just down a little bit. Um, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, uh, the glory of the uh, one <clears throat> and only Son who came uh, from the Father full of grace and truth. So, now I use these scripture passages when I'm teaching um, the person work of Jesus Christ as foundational to show his deity and his uh, humanity. Now when I do teach it with children, I use mostly just these two verses. If it's... Um, someone you know in their upper teens or uh, an adult I use these two passages and then I also go to Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 through 8 uh, because these verses um, Philippians chapter 2 verses uh, 6 through 8 confirm uh, John 1 1 and John 1 14 who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be um, used to his own advantage. Rather he made himself nothing by making, um, by taking the very nature of a servant. Uh, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now these, uh, these, four, these uh, five scriptures are very good. Uh, for laying the foundation of teaching the person work of Jesus Christ. They do, however, they do not work very well in refuting Arianism because um, Ari Arian groups have monkeyed with John 1 1 quite a bit, enough so that if you try to deal with uh, John 1 1 with them, you're going to really kind of come up against a brick wall. So, ideally, what, what we want to do is be able to prove irrefutably the deity of Christ to those who are um, in Arianism with scriptures that their sects have not dealt with very much and in fact teach around because they um, really didn't know uh, that the deity was revealed by these scriptures. So we'll go to Revelation chapter 1. Uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Right here. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, after you read this scripture to a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or anyone that is Arian, um, simply ask them, who is speaking here? And they will say, Jehovah, Heavenly Father, or God. Um, and then we're just going to go right over to Revelation 2.8 in this Bible. It begins on the bottom of the page. I use, uh, this is an, an NIV, my favorite um, translation, uh, New International um, 
uh, version. Uh, to the angel um, of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. Now after reading this verse, you want to ask him again, who is this verse talking about? It is uh, uh, the first and the last who died and came back to life again. They will agree that it's Jesus Christ. He is the one who died and came back to life. So at this point, they are going to, um, they're going to see two persons. They're going to believe that Revelation 1.8 is the Father and Revelation 2.8 is the Son. But to, to um, bring these together and to reveal who it is, we'll go over to Revelation uh, chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 and 13. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Now here you can ask them who is speaking. You probably get some silence. It's been my experience that you get some silence because they're unprepared for this. But even if they give you an answer or a pat answer, just go ahead and, and read the verse again. Uh, look, I am coming soon my reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last the beginning and the end so what you can do here is you can ask who was the first and the last is it isn't that the one who died and came back to life and that would be Jesus Christ and they'll agree but you can point out that this one person is claiming also the title of Alpha and Omega who in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 claimed to be God Almighty as well so the conclusion between with these four verses is that the Alpha and the Omega, who is God Almighty, the first and the last, who died and came back to life again, who is Jesus Christ, are the same person. It's Jesus who is speaking in Revelation 1.8. Uh, so these four passages of Scripture easily refute Arianism um, rather than the uh, first uh, five verses that we used. Um, if you use those first five verses with uh, people following Aryan sects, they will, you will have a much more difficult time. Those verses are very good uh, for laying the foundation of the personal work of Jesus Christ, but they are very difficult to use when dealing with Arianism. So if you use these four verses, um, Aryan sects uh, don't realize the importance of these four verses, so they haven't really monkeyed with the translation of them, and they're taught around them because they're unaware. And so revealing the deity of Christ is very simply done with just these four passages of scripture.